Have you ever worked on an image and thought, I'm still lacking definition and I know if I could just squeeze in some more definition, I could really enhance the beauty of this image. But you can't, right? Because the only way that you can is to get more integration time and try to refine it even further. And even then, you're limited by the aperture of your telescope because aperture is tantamount to equaling the resolving power of detail or definition within the image. Well, you know, there is a way to push for more definition within your image. And no, you don't have to run out and buy a bigger telescope or spend another two or three nights under the stars when you're wanting to get onto shooting another DSO. In fact, that extra definition that you're looking for is already there in the signal that you already have. If you watched my video on the Orton effect, a video called the Orton effect on an astro image, that's crazy, right? You may have picked up an idea that I didn't come right out and say in that video, but the application of the Orton effect is very much like folding light back on itself to increase the apparent signal, not the actual signal. The actual signal is simply the result of how much integration time that you have, but you can increase your apparent signal. That's how strong the signal looks. Now, there are many ways to fold a signal back on itself. The Orton effect is a great illustration that dates all the way back to the 1980s, when Mr. Orton discovered that he could take multiple negatives of the same image, process each one slightly differently, and add them together to get a more intense image that looks somewhat dreamlike by adding just a little bit of blur. Now, generally in astrophotography, we don't want the blur, but the principles still apply. Now, the Orton effect mainly involves folding low bandpass information back on itself. That's your light and color, and that results in strengthening the saturation, color, and intensity of the image, all around making the signal appear stronger. But that primarily works on low frequency information. In the low frequency of an image is where you find your lightness and darkness and your color and saturation information. I'll illustrate by taking a moment to split this image into its low frequency and high frequency information. This is the low frequency information. You can see it looks very blurry, and that's because this information lacks all the detail. It just contains information like shadow versus light and color, hue, and saturation. And this is our high frequency information. This is where we find the detail, the contrast that is contained both within the luminance and the R, G, and B channels, or if you're using narrow band, the O and S and H channels don't let the names of those channels fool you because in the end, they're still R, G, and B channels. They just happen to be capturing very specific ranges of color information. In the end, no matter what filters you shot with, you're really always working with L, R, G, and B. But that too is a topic for another video. So let's say that I'm looking at this image and I'm pretty happy with it. And I am, I'm pretty happy with it, but I still think it needs more definition. How do I do this? Well, I can use the same principles from the Orton effect, except instead of folding the light back over on itself, I'm going to fold the definition back over on itself. And I'm going to do this by applying that tool that you just saw me use to show you the low frequency and the high frequency information, the frequency separation tool. In Affinity Photo, it's found under the filters menu up top. And we're going to use this tool to extract the high frequency information only, just the detail and the definition. And then we're going to fold that detail and definition back into the image through compositing. If you're working with a mono camera, you're going to find most of the detail and definition on the luminance channel. Here's the luminance channel from my image with the Wizard Nebula, stretched, sharpened, and stars extracted. If you're working with an image from an OSC camera, a one-shot color camera, you can try this technique on the color image, or you can just use the saturation tool to entirely desaturate the image. And that way you're working with what you might think of as a pseudo-luminance channel. Here in Affinity Photo, I am working with a fully developed rendition of the image, but I have dragged the luminance plate with the stars removed into the image and placed it as a new layer on top of the original image. Now, I don't want to add the low-frequency information because that will over-brighten the image. I just want the detail from the luminance channel. Your luminance channel when shooting mono is where most of your detail information is going to be. So I'll pop up to the filters menu, open it, go down to the frequency separation filter and drag the radius all the way over to 100 pixels to get all that information. And when I hit the apply button, the luminance channel will be split by the frequency separation tool into its low frequency and high frequency information. I'll click off the low frequency layer because I'm not going to need it, that makes it invisible leaving only the high frequency information on top of the image. 
Notice toward the right in the Composite Mode drop-down menu that I have the Lighten Composite Mode selected. This gently adds the high frequency information to the image below. And this isn't the only good composite mode for doing this, but right now, I'm just going to work with the Lighten Composite Mode. It's doing well enough. There is now very sharp and crisp definition within this image. Let's compare what the image looked like before and after. Before and after. I now have the additional definition of the image that I was going for, but it's a bit heavy-handed. That's easily remedied, however. We can soften up how heavy-handed the high-frequency information is added to the rest of the image. I'll do this first by playing with composite modes till I find the one that I feel works best with the image. Composite modes do work very similar to pixel math and PixInsight, except instead of the time-consuming and laborious process of entering in various formulae and applying them to see what the outcome is, you can just drag your mouse cursor down among nearly 40 composite mode options and pick and choose the one you like best. Once you find it, then you can determine how heavily that composite mode is applied to the image. In the end, I settle on the Vivid Light composite mode. It applies the high frequency information to the image below in a somewhat heavy handed way. But I also know from experience that the Vivid composite mode responds very well to adjustments of opacity on the opacity slider. So, having selected the Vivid Composite Mode, I'll just tone down the opacity a bit till I find the points where I feel just the right amount of the additional high frequency information is layered on top of the image that is already there. And it's right there at 61%. Let's go back and compare the before and after. Here's before I folded the high frequency information back on itself. And here's after. Once again before and after. Now, overall I like the way the additional high frequency information impacts the image. However, there are just a couple places where I feel that the impact is a little too strong, such as the spire in the top left quarter. So in Affinity Photo, and you can do this in Photoshop too I'm sure, you can just select the high frequency layer and your erase tool, reduce the softness of the tool to zero, and the flow and opacity to anywhere between 20 and 50-60% and partially erase out that detail so the impact is not so hard right in that area. This is tantamount to manual masking, and this simple technique allows you to customize the high frequency overlay to put exactly as much of it as you want where and when you feel the image needs it, yielding a final image that looks like this. So in summary, we see that you can use Affinity Photo's frequency separation filter to separate the high frequency from the low frequency information of the image or any layer and then fold that high frequency information back into the image to redouble the definition within the image. If working with information from a mono camera, you would typically separate the information from the luminance channel because that's where most of your definition or high frequency information is, and then fold that information by way of compositing back into your image. And if working with an image from a one-shot color camera, you can either use the color image because that's all you have is a color image, or you can desaturate the image entirely and then separate out the high and low frequency information. This technique does not introduce any new or false information into the image. It's just a way to strengthen the high frequency information that is already contained within the image, allowing you to pull additional sharpness from your image without needing the expense of a larger telescope or of more time under the stars, which frees up your telescope and camera for imaging other objects. You can also pop over to the Sky Story Astro Bin to see the full res versions of the before and after from this video. I hope that helps, and if you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you don't mind, take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button, especially if you are interested in signal cultivation techniques like this, as we'll be studying several more over the next few weeks. Now, have a blast doing astrophotography, and get out there and shoot the sky.